Hello students, welcome to the class. Welcome to the class on Indian Polity Series for Group 1 Prelims TSPSC. As the part of Indian Polity Series, today in this class, we will look into an important topic which is part of the parliament that is the financial process in the parliament. Along with that, let us also see anti-defection law. Anti-defection law is something which is in use. So, let us focus on these two topics. Now, coming to parliament financial process. The fi parliament financial process mostly consists of the topics like budget, right, annual financial statement, annual financial statement, right. We have consolidated fund of India, contingent fund of India, public fund of India as well as the cut motions. You also have cut motion. So, these are the topics which are discussed in the financial relations of the or financial process in the parliament. Now, coming to anti-defection law, coming to anti-defection law. Friends, anti-defection law is not part of the original Indian constitution. Anti-defection law was later added in the constitution of India. Anti-defection law was added by 52nd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1985. The 52nd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1985 has inserted Schedule 10 of the constitution which deals with anti-defection law. Anti-defection law is that law which is in related or which deals with the members of the legislature who tend to change their parties after the elections. Anti-defection law is in news. So, these are the two topics which we will focus on in this particular class. Let us continue and take our class forward by looking at the first question. Look at the first question. As I told you many times even before in my classes, our intention through this series is to make you understand two things. One, how the questions will be framed. When you read a subject, when you read Indian polity, you should also understand how the questions are framed or will be framed. And the second intention is that, how to answer the question. When you practice these objective type questions, you will know how to practice these questions. You will know how the questions are asked. So, this is our intention through these classes. Now, let us look at the first question. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Choose the correct statement. The term budget is nowhere mentioned in the constitution. Okay. Article 112 of the constitution deals with annual financial statement. Now, there are few important terms which are not mentioned in the constitution. Like we have the term like Lok Sabha, the term Rajya Sabha, right? the term Federation, right? the term Budget. These terms are nowhere mentioned in the constitution. Meaning, this is correct statement. The term budget is nowhere mentioned in the constitution. Then, there should be some article which deals with the budget, right? 
and that is your article 112. Article 112 talks about annual financial statement of the government. The government, the president of India shall lay down the annual financial statement of the government in the parliament via budget session, via budget session. See as per article 85 of the constitution, a session of the parliament is started or can be stopped by president of India only. So, the answer for this also is C, the answer is C because both the statements are correct. Very, very important, these type of questions can be asked for your exam. Now, let us go to the next question here, All right. Look at this question mark, consider the following and choose the correct statement, again correct statement, okay. Article 116 deals with vote on account, article 116 deals with vote on account. We already know what is article 112, annual financial statement. Now, here my question is article 116 deals with vote on account, okay. Vote on account is the budget passed in the election year. Now, this is one favorite question in your exam. Many people tend to opt for the wrong answer. If you think the answer is C, that is absolutely wrong because the answer for this is A. Statement 2 is wrong, statement 1 is correct. Article 116 deals with vote on account, but which is not the budget passed in election year. Then what is this? Vote on account, vote on account is the advanced budget, advanced budget passed in, see this is important, passed in Lok Sabha only to meet the expenses of, to meet the expenses of government till budget is passed till budget is passed. Look at this friends, what did I say here? See whenever the budget is initiated or whenever the annual financial statement is initiated in the parliament, the government tend to lose its capacity to withdraw the amount from consolidated fund of India. Whenever the budget is initiated in the parliament, till the budget comes into force in full fledged manner. The government cannot take or cannot appropriate amount from the consolidated fund of India. Now, till the budget comes into force, there are expenses for the government. There are many expenses for the government. To meet the expenses of the government, the advanced budget is passed in the Lok Sabha only. Generally, this advanced budget or vote on account is one sixth of the total budget, one sixth of the total budget, one sixth of the total budget. Now, this advanced budget which is passed to meet the expenses of the government, only in Lok Sabha when it is passed to meet the expenses of the government, I am repeating this, is called vote on account. So, then what is the budget which is passed in election year called? The budget passed in election year is called interim budget, temporary budget. It is not vote on account. Do not get confused here. Interim budget is the budget which is passed in the election year. Vote on account is an advanced budget passed to meet the expenses of the government till the budget comes into force. Very, very important for your exam. Vote on account is discussed in article 116 of the constitution. 
Now let us come back to the third question or the next question. Right, a very direct question ma. Which article of the constitution deals with appropriation bill? See appropriation bill. An appropriation bill is something which is passed in Lok Sabha after vote on demands, after the vote on demands from different ministries. See, after each ministry demand is put forward to voting, after each ministry demand is put forward to voting, then after each ministry demand is put forward to voting and it is passed, the Lok Sabha passes an appropriation bill. Appropriation bill is passed in Lok Sabha only, remember this. Within 75 days, within 75 days from appropriation bill, then you need to pass a financial bill. Where? When you pass this financial bill, within this 75 days, it is said that the budget comes into force in, uh, comes into force in full-fledged manner. Now, which article deals with appropriation bill is my question. Article triple one of the constitution, article triple one of the constitution deals with the veto powers of the president of India. You all know what is article 116, right? Vote on account. Article 118 talks about rules of procedure and conduct of business. This is called Famously, Rob Cobb. So, the left over is Article 114. Article 114 talks about appropriation bill. All these are very, very important for the exam. Let us come back to the next question. Right. Look at the question, ma. Try to understand the question. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Okay. Parliament permission, Parliament permission is must, okay, for government to appropriate funds from Consolidated Fund of India. Contingent Fund of India is maintained by Revenue Secretary on behalf of Government of India. Okay, look at the screen, ma. See, there are three types of funds. The first type of fund is called Consolidated Fund of India. The second type of fund is called contingent fund of India and the third type of fund is called public fund of India. Okay? Now, all these three types of funds are maintained by the government. All the three types of funds are maintained by the government. Now, what is consolidated fund of India? Try to understand this very carefully. According to Article 266 of the Constitution, 266 of the Constitution, every rupee earned by the government shall be appropriated into Consolidated Fund of India. Every rupee earned by government shall be deposited into, appropriate, into Consolidated Fund of India. Every rupee earned by the government shall be deposited into Consolidated Fund of India. Now, government also has expenses. For the expenses of the government, to withdraw the money from Consolidated Fund of India, for the expenses of the government, to withdraw the amount from Consolidated Fund of India, government has to take Parliament permission. Without Parliament permission, Government cannot withdraw funds from the Consolidated Fund of India. Parliament will provide permission by passing certain bills or laws. This is your Consolidated Fund of India. Now, what is Contingent Fund of India? See, contingency means emergency, disaster. Now, whenever there is a disaster or whenever there is an emergency need of funds, you can't go to parliament and ask money. 
and you cannot wait till the procedure is completed because there is a disaster, we need to act, we need money. So, for that purpose, some particular amount is always deposited into con contingent fund of India. Contingent fund of India is maintained by revenue secretary, managed by revenue secretary. But who authorizes the money from contingent fund of India? The president only. The president has the authority to authorize the money from contingent fund of India. Now, what is public fund? We actually deposit some money with the government by actually taking some schemes, insurance schemes, PFs, public provident fund, we, we Atal Bhima Yojana. You know, there are many schemes according to which we actually deposit some amount with the government ensuring that the government will repay back with good lumps of money like you have Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana etc. Now, all this money we deposited with the government to get back in the future at the time of maturity are deposited in public fund of India. So, these are the three types of funds maintained by the government. Now, look at the question. Parliament permission is must for the government to appropriate funds from the consolidated fund of India. Absolutely correct. Parliament permission is needed. Contingent fund of India is maintained by revenue secretary. Correct. On behalf of government. Wrong. On behalf of president of India. See. Who has the authority to appropriate funds from the contingent fund of India? It is president. President has the authority to authorize the funds from contingent fund of India. So, the answer for this is A. Okay. Now, let us go on to the next question. Look at the question friends. Consider the following and choose the correct state. The procedure to pass the budget is mentioned in the constitution. Cut motions in budget is taken only in Lok Sabha. Okay. The procedure to pass the budget is nowhere mentioned in the constitution, is not mentioned in the constitution. Then now, the procedure to pass the budget is mentioned in the rules of the parliament, rules of the parliament. Now, parliament rules are actually framed by parliament only according to article 118. Article 118 provides the power to parliament to come up with their own rules. Now, cut motions is only taken in Lok Sabha. This is correct. There are three types of cut motions. The first one is called policy cut. The second one is called economy cut. And the third one is called token cut. There are three types of cut motions. So, the answer for this is B. Two only is the answer. Now, all these cut motions are the tools used by the opposition leaders to bring down the amount of the budget or to uh, show their uh, uh, show their grievance or show their dishonesty or uh, uh, not dishonesty that is what that was not the right word but show their uh, some problem with any policy of the budget they can actually make sure that this policy has certain loopholes and they make it evident by utilizing this kind of these cut motions now, let us come back to the next question. Aich. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Okay. Public Accounts Committee consists of 22 members and all are from Lok Sabha. Estimates Committee consists of 30 members and all are from Lok Sabha. Okay. So, here we are discussing about something called parliamentary committee. See, parliamentary committees are the research think tanks of the parliament. Parliamentary committees are the research think tanks of the parliament. Generally, we divide the parliamentary committees into two types. The first one is called standing committees. The second one is called ad hoc committees. The first one is called standing committees. The second one is called ad hoc committees. Now, standing committees are further divided into two types. 
the first one is called departmental related standing committees we generally divide this and the next one is called financial committees so there are 24 departmental related standing committees but there is a proposal by the government to actually bring it down to 2021 also so let's wait and see but there are three types of financial committees there are three types of financial committees public accounts committee estimates committee committee on public sector undertakings there are three types of committees now the question is about public accounts committee and estimates committee i'll get back to this question but let me also tell you one more point ad hoc committees are also of two types the first one is called research and the second one is called enquiry based enquiry based committee so parliamentary committees are the research think tanks of the parliament parliamentary committees are the research think tanks of the parliament now the question is all about public accounts committee and estimates committee see the main duty of the public accounts committee is to review the reports of the cag estimates committee responsible is to prepare the budget okay now public accounts committee consists of 22 members absolutely correct out of which 15 are from lok sabha 7 are from rajya sabha so this is wrong because public accounts committee consists of 22 members but not all from lok sabha 15 from lok sabha 7 from rajya sabha estimates a committee consists of 30 members correct and all are from lok sabha answer is b okay so let's go to the next question yes for which of the following bits there is no joint sitting of the parliament in case of a deadlock okay look at the listen to me very carefully what is the meaning of a deadlock what is joint sitting of the parliament article 108 of the constitution 108 of the constitution provides for the joint sitting of the parliament of both the houses lok sabha and rajya sabha in case of a deadlock over a particular bill three points point number 1 according to article 108 president has the authority to initiate the joint sitting of the parliament second point the joint sitting of the parliament is headed by the speaker of the lok sabha third point very important in the absence of the speaker the deputy speaker will be the head of the joint sitting full stop in the absence of the deputy speaker the deputy chairman of the rajya sabha will be the head of the joint sitting meaning the chairman of the rajya sabha cannot be the head of the joint sitting very very important now the question is for which bills there will be a joint sitting chalo let us see see there is something called ordinary bill there is something called financial bill type 1 financial bill type 2 hmm? we have a cab money bill and constitutional amendment bill now look at this joint sitting of the parliament as per article 108 okay now one more point ama there is no provision of joint sitting for state legislature there is no provision of joint sitting for state legislatures okay now for ordinary bills there will be a joint sitting in case of a deadlock sir what is the meaning of deadlock when there is a difference of opinion between lok sabha and rajya sabha on a bill when lok sabha says yes rajya sabha says no right when rajya sabha says yes lok sabha says no that is called deadlock difference of opinion is called deadlock okay for differences of opinion for ordinary bill there will be a joint sitting 
financial bill part 1 yes 2 yes there is no joint sitting for money bill there is no joint sitting for cap ok now look at the question for which of the following there is no joint sitting amount no joint sitting so money bill yes for this both joint sitting of the parliament can be held ok answer is here ok very very important let us go to the consider the following and choose the correct statement question hour is the hour of the parliament is the first hour of the parliament question hour do not take place on the budget day and motion of tanks both the statements are correct only both the statements are correct now look at the screen parliament generally starts from 11 am and continues till 6 pm right not compulsorily and according to the rules it is 11 to 6 but it can be changed speaker can ask them to come at 6 am and maybe speaker can leave at 10 pm also there is no but this is how generally it works now 11 to 12 so there is something called question hour right now 12 to 1 right there is something called zero hour 1 to 2 you have lunch and the normal business yeah and the normal business of the house takes place between 2 pm to 6 pm so this is how it is this is the timings of the parliament okay let's go to the next question now ha huh, very very important consider the following and choose the correct statement anti defect law is discussed in schedule 10 of the constitution this is absolutely correct i told you before also while introduction of the uh, uh, class yes this is correct now schedule 10 is linked to article 110 102 sorry and 191 correct this is also correct see article 102 talks about disqualifications of member of parliament and 191 talks 191 talks about disqualifications of the members of state legislature so both the statements are correct okay next question and see the last question here consider the following and choose the correct statement okay a nominated member can be disqualified if he or she is not joining any party within 6 months under anti defection law correct who can disqualify the speaker or a nominated member has to join a political party within 6 months otherwise he can be disqualified speaker position is exempted from anti defection law this is also correct why whenever a person is elected as the speaker the speaker has to cancel his membership to the political party so that is the reason speaker position is accepted from anti defection law so both the statements are correct here so this is the important objective type questions related to parliament financial procedure and also anti defection law please go through again i'll see you guys again in the next class with another topic of indian polity till then happy learning jai hind Thank you.